As hard as we try with the .NET MAUI framework to put everything in there and never have to touch platform specific code, there are always scenarios that will require you to write some platform code. In this video, that's exactly what we're going to see how to do that. But before we dive straight into the code, I have to do a quick shout out again to all of my members. Thank you so much for joining my channel as a member. As a member, you will get a couple of perks. I will be sure to answer your comments that you may have faster. You can join my Discord and get a, a special role. You can use some special emojis. You will get a little badge behind your name. Really, really cool. But most importantly, you are supporting me a little bit with all the stuff that I'm doing here for free for you. I will still keep doing it if you don't support me. But of course, anything you can and spare to um, you know contribute a little bit to me um, would be amazing so thank you so much for that and as a perk to senior developers I will give you a little shout out in one of my videos so this time Patrick Grazils it sounds kind of Dutch I don't know maybe you are uh, if so please reach out I'll be happy to have a chat in Dutch um, thank you so much for joining my channel as a member let's quickly continue to uh, the main event of today so here you see a file new .NET MAUI application. This is just a template that comes out of the box in Visual Studio 2022 um, right now. On the right, you can see our project. And as you know already probably um, about .NET MAUI is that we now have the single project approach, which is something that you don't have to use, but our templates um, by default will give you the single project approach, um, which means that all your platform specific code is the thing that we're going to look at is also living inside of this project. So how does that work? Well, you probably already noticed in earlier videos, or maybe you played around with it yourself, there is this platforms folder. And in that platforms folder, there is Android, iOS, Mac Catalyst, Windows. Those were separate projects uh, whenever you worked with Xamarin Forms. But now they're inside of this same project. And as you can see, um, this holds all the Android specific stuff or the iOS specific stuff, like the Android manifest, uh, the main activity for iOS, the info.plist, et cetera, et cetera. So that's all in here. Now, because of a thing called multi-targeting, uh, we're able to compile just certain bits, uh, certain classes, certain pieces of code that are used for whenever you're targeting Android or whenever you're targeting iOS. Now, how does that work? Um, basically, everything outside of your platforms folder, but in the same project, will be compiled always. Um, so, you know, if you write a class, if you have this main page right here, this MAUI program that will compile regardless of the platform that you're targeting. Now, inside of the platforms folder, um, whenever you put something in the Android folder, that will only be compiled whenever you're targeting Android. And for iOS, that will be compiled only when you're targeting iOS. So that's really cool. But that kind of raises the question, like, how do you write your code in kind of a somewhat elegant way without doing all kinds of ifs and checking all the platforms all the time? Well, I'm going to show you one way in this video, uh, which has to do with partial classes and partial methods. Um, but there are other ways as well, which I will be making videos about. And of course, as always, if you have questions, please let me know down in the comments. So let's create a partial class first in our um, project. So that's going to be compiled always. I'm going to right click on our project to add to class. And I'm going to name this device, whoops, device orientation service. All right, so just a plain class, nothing fancy, click add, um, and it will generate a empty class for us. Um, here you can see it. So this generates internal by default. Um, let's make this, I don't, I think you can keep it internal if that's what you want, but I'm going to make it public for now. And the main thing that I'm going to do is make this partial. Now partial classes um, are just, I mean, the classes are logically divided um, by the class name. Um, and we like to put them in files then, right? In, in the same kind of file name with the file name device orientation service, that's it. Um, whenever you do the partial class, then you can divide your class up in multiple files if that's what you want or if that's needed for some specific case that you might have like writing platform specific code in dot and maui um, without you probably knowing you have been working with partial classes for a long long time if you have been working with XAML. If we look at this main page XAML and the code behind for that, then you can see that this is a partial class as well. Um, that's because the XAML will also generate a class um, in, in the background for you. Um, and that partial class will merge with the code in here. And suddenly we have this main page um, that is a one class uh, to rule them all, basically. So you've been working with that for a long, long time already. Now, 
Let's go back to our device orientation service because what you can also do, what you probably didn't know because not a lot of people are using it, is that you can use partial methods. So we can here also say public partial um, device orientation, which is something I still need to create. And we can say get, whoops, get orientation. So let me quickly grab this device orientation. It's just a simple enum. Um, let me just get that from here, copy paste that in. Um, here we are. So now it knows that it should return this device orientation. And this has a get orientation. And you can see if we inspect the little message here that it says um, partial method um, get orientation must have an implementation part because it has accessibility modifier. So whenever you have this, this public thing right here um, or pro private or whatever, then it needs a um, implementation somewhere. And because it's a partial class, we can specify that um, implementation somewhere else. Do you have any idea where that's going to be? Um, right, so the actual implementations are going to live in the platforms folder, right? So if we now go to Android and we do add class, and I'm going to also name this device orientation service. And I'm going to make that also a public partial class. Now there's one important thing here that it has to live in the same namespace for this to work. Um, so for this namespace, we are going to have to remove this one because um, now it all lives in the same Maui platform code sample namespace, which is the same namespace as you can see um, right here. So uh, that has to be the same. That's kind of like a thing that you need to note here. Um, and then we can just copy basically this line here, but now we can give it an implementation. So let's just go here and make this an implementation. And um, I have some code set up here that actually will get the orientation for a um, Android device. So let me just paste that in and not bore you with that. Um, you can see it gives me a couple of reds quickly. So I'm going to add some usings and you can see that these usings are Android specific, right? So suddenly we're in Android land and we can use all this Android specific stuff, which is really cool because this will only get compiled whenever we are targeting Android. So I can just um, import all this and now it should work. And now we have code that will get the orientation for a Android device. And this should stop complaining. Um, and it does. Um, and if you want to switch around between the different targets, you can here see in the top left, um, you can see that it now targets net 6.0 Android. And if we go into this drop down, and you can see that the iOS and the Mac Catalyst and the Windows ones are here as well. Um, and if we switch to the iOS one now, for instance, then it will start complaining again that there isn't a implementation. So you also need to have an implementation on each platform um, that you actually want to target with this. So that is another thing that you need to keep in mind. Now let's switch back to, to Android for now. Um, I got this all set up for Android. Actually, let me add the iOS one as well. So now I'm going to add class and I'm going to name this device orientation service again. So no need to name this anything else. Um, and I can say public partial. And now we got the same class. And I think I can just copy and paste this uh, method signature here again. So let's just do that because I'm a lazy developer. Whoops, let's not forget to put it in the same namespace. And now I also have some code that will allow you to get the orientation for an iOS device. So let's just paste that. And again, red squigglies, I'm going to solve that with using UI kit. So suddenly we have iOS specific namespaces here, which is really, really cool. Import that and boom, we have the code for this as well. And if I now go back to the shared code um, and I switch my target over to iOS, it will also say that, hey, this is perfectly fine because I have an implementation for this as well. Now let's switch back to Android. That's the one that I'm going to show you. Um, now, of course, we need to consume this code. Um, so if we go to our main page, um, I'm going to name this hello world thing here. So I'm just going to give this a name so I can reference it from my code behind is uh, orientation label. And from my actual code behind right here, I'm going to set my orientation label dot text is new uh, device orientation service dot get orientation. And I probably need to do a two string because um, it's an enum, right? So do the two string as well. 
Now our text should go to the device orientation. So let's run this on Windows subsystem for Android. Um, and we should see our application come up and it should give us the orientation. Now that in itself is not very um, exciting, I guess. Uh, the functionality for that is um, just a few lines of code as you could see. But the really amazing thing here is that you can just use this single line of code and depending on which platform you're running on, um, it will show you a different output because of the multi-targeting stuff. So I think our application is coming up here. Um, we should see a little window. There is our splash screen. And hopefully our label is now going to show, yes, it's going to show portrait. Well, in this case, it's kind of like, I don't know if this makes sense because it's running on Windows subsystem for Android. So um, this is basically an Android application running on Windows 11. Uh, I don't know how these kinds of sensor things would work, but at least it gives us some output, right? It shows that we're actually running through the Android part of this code, which is really amazing. And with that, we have learned how to write platform specific code in .NET MAUI. Now, if you've been watching other videos or maybe looking at some .NET MAUI code, then you probably know that you can also use the um, compiler directives or I don't know how they're called exactly with the hashtag if it's not called hashtag in this case, but hashtag if Android or hashtag if iOS and you write your code between that, uh, which really clutters your code, I feel. So I don't really like that way. And I want to see if there were other ways to do this. Um, so this is one other way. Probably other people will not like the partial classes and the partial methods as well. Um, that is is totally up to you. Of course, as always, there are other ways to do this as well. Um, so be sure to check out my videos right at the very end that we're coming on to right now, um, which will show you some other ways to do that. Thank you so much for watching again one of my videos. Please click that like button if you've liked this little piece of content um, so other people can enjoy it as well and know that this is actually worth watching. Um, if you're new here, welcome. Please check out the subscribe button I got down below uh, to subscribe to this channel and you will be notified of this new content automatically. How amazing is that? Other than that, I'll be seeing you for my next video, um, but be sure to check out this video about doing the same thing with dependency injection as well. <gasps> Keep coding.